Okay. Has anyone else uh, seen the thing, the uh, exercise regimen for people over 60? Well, here's how it goes. Um, I found it very interesting. Uh, take a five-pound potato bag in each hand and then raise your arms straight out. And try to hold them there for a minute. Everybody with me now? When, when you get used to that, then uh, increase that to a 10-pound potato bag. Pick it up and hold it. And hold that. When you can hold that in this position for a minute, increase it to a 50-pound potato bag. And when you feel comfortable and confident in that, then go to the next and the biggest 100-pound potato bag. Now, when you can hold a potato bag, a 100-pound potato bag in each arm like this for about a minute and you start to feel comfortable, the next time you do the exercise, you need to put a potato in the bag. <laughs> I can see people out there going, no way, I ain't going to be able to hold that. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Before we get started, I would like you to start thinking about someone that you, someone who's alive, that you admire, and you would like to meet. You know, it's not someone you know, uh, well, it's someone you know of, but it's not someone in your circle right now, and someone you would like to meet and spend some time with. Start thinking about that as we go through the rest of the service. The year is A.D. 155, and persecution is flaring up. The Roman emperor's persecution and, and focus happens to be on a guy named Polycarp, who is the, the pastor of a church in Smyrna. Yes, and Smyrna is one of the churches that got a letter from John. Polycarp is a disciple of John. Uh, Polycarp was a protege of John, the Apostle John. Finally, uh, they could take it no more. They arrested him. Uh, when the people in the church got wind that the, the, the emperor was looking for him, they tried to hide him, but they found him, and they brought him to the arena, and uh, they were about to murder him, martyr him. Polycarp is 86 years old. And the emperor says to him, if you will renounce Jesus Christ, you can live. And Polycarp said, these 86 years, my Lord has been faithful to me. I will not deny him now. And they killed Polycarp. They martyred him. Where did he get that strength? What gave him that ability? And remember, as we go through this message, it's 155 A.D. It's approximately 120 years after Jesus' ascension into heaven. And some 25 to 30 years after the death of the Apostle John. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace. And I ask you now, dear Father, to help me as I try to come at this special day from a different angle and bring it into a different awareness. Lord, I think you put this message on my heart. I believe that. And so, Lord, I ask you now to help me deliver it. Lord, we do pray for Jim and George we ask you, dear God, to continue to touch them and raise them up strong. Re renew them, O oh Lord. Bring them back to their normal activities amongst us. And Father, we pray for anyone else who might be absent today for illness. We ask you to bless them where they are. But we are here. And we've come here because we want to, well, grow in our way and our understanding, our knowledge of you. Lord, I ask
ask you to help me in Jesus' name. Amen. Wednesday, we started the case for Creator, and you really didn't miss very much. It was a kind of an overview, and so if you're intending on uh, uh, hoping to attend, I encourage you to do so. But one of the significant things that came out was how Lee Strobel said that he, he was more of an agnostic, but when, when religious leaders and people who were respected, couldn't answer his questions about God. Either they were trying to avoid them or they just didn't even want to answer them. He started to drift towards atheism. I tell you that because that's what we do here. Look, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to criticize any other church or any other group. All I'm concerned with is what, if you're busy criticizing others, you can't do what you're supposed to be doing. Well, that might be good advice for some of our Congress people, right? Shut up and do what you're there for. Anyway, uh, enough of that. The fact is, is that that's what uh, my heart is to have you know this book and get in touch with God to such an extent that you have the answers or at least the platform to find the answer when they ask the questions and that you sincerely do it. That's what God asks of us. We're here to make disciples, not enjoy the lavish benefits. We do enjoy them, but we're here to help people understand the truth. And the Holy Spirit helps us do that. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he said, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Beloved, the fact of the matter is, is that that's why Parley Carp could stand there and say, No, I'm not going to deny Christ. But you and I, sometimes we have to be careful we're so intimidated by the world. We're so wanting companionship or recognition or belonging. Oh, the list goes on and on. That we... Mm, mm, mm. No, we shouldn't. Got a kick out of uh, Representative Sassy. I don't know what, how to pronounce his name. The, the uh, congressperson who was on Bill Maher's show when he used the N-word. Afterwards, he says, I should have said something. I should have, you know, not laughed at that. Did you ever feel that way? I have. Boy, I don't like it. You know, when you walk away from something and you think, why didn't I, I shouldn't have, it makes you feel rotten, don't it? I want that power. Now, not everybody wants to hear it. You know, there are some people, they made their decisions and they don't care. But we're here to help those who do. Oh, I'm going to try to, oh, it's off. Let me see. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Hallelujah, we're getting good, boy. You'd think we knew what we were doing. Metamorphosis. Do you all know what a metamorphosis is? All you got to do is watch a caterpillar turn into a butterfly. Or a poly, uh, not a polywog, a tadpole turn into a frog. That's a metamorphosis. It's one form of life transitioning into another form. Any complete change in appearance or character or circumstances, etc. That's what God, the Holy Spirit, wants to do in us. He wants to create a metamorphosis to make us what we should be. Not, look, every caterpillar, be, you know, caterpillar becomes a butterfly or sometimes a moth. You know, they're, they're different, but, but they become something else. 
And we're supposed to realize that we're supposed to too. We're born human, but we're supposed to become saintly. We have a tendency to be sinners, but God wants to transform us. In fact, the scripture tells us he wants to renew our minds. He wants to circumcise our heart. He wants to make us in his image. That's been a theme, hasn't it? I've, I've had that in my head ringing over and over and over now for months. God wants to make you and I in his image, you know, in his character image. And, beloved, we should willingly let him. Because if we do, I, w I know my life has been greatly enhanced by him and by that transition. And, and, and reality is, is that in the Old Testament, it was more challenging for them. In fact, we read in, yeah, in Psalm 108, we read uh, one of the comments uh, from David. In Psalm 108 and verse 12, give us help from trouble for vain is the help of man. Through God we will do valiantly. For it is he who shall tread down our enemies. He's calling out to God and saying, give us, give us the help that we need. And, and to, to tread down our enemies. <laughs> Beloved, when we hear enemies, we instantly think of, outside of us we think of others we think of the devil we think of the, the demons and so on but actually the reality of it is is that one of our greatest enemies is our flesh it's us didn't pogo say that we've met the enemy and he is us because we give in we surrender we submit to the desires of the flesh or the ways of the world or the greed or the, the, the lusts that we have. So, really, those things are there for everybody. How is it that some are able to overcome them? How is it that some have one that overcomes them more than others while Others seem to get the victory. It's because the ones who are submitting to the Holy Spirit, they get the victory. Not every, Maybe not every time, but most of the time. So, yeah, we need to have a knowledge of the Word, but that Word tells us we need the Holy Spirit. And so we get to Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verses 25 through 27. This is God now speaking. He said, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. We read in Genesis that finally we get to Seth and Seth, it says, was call, was, then began to call upon the Lord. What happened? I mean, here we have Adam and Eve talking directly to God in the garden. But by the time we get to Seth, we get the statement in the scriptures, men began to call upon the Lord. Somewhere along that line, men started to ignore God. They started to forget about him. Didn't want his help at all. Didn't pray. But Seth, around the time Seth is born, which, by the way, is about 130 years after creation, so just in that span. Wow. Wow, look at America. On TV, we have this uh, TV channel. There's a couple of them. 
There's Antenna TV, Laugh TV, Cozy. Uh, there's another one, too. But they have the old-time shows, you know. What's my line? I've got a secret to tell the truth. Groucho Marx, right? You commonly hear, God bless you. Oh, God is good. I mean, you, you hear these terms normally. People we know in the 50s, people were worshiping and honoring God, thanking, them for, thanking him for the victory we experienced in World War II. So it didn't take that long for us to get where we are today when one of the other things that happened on this date was the Supreme Court struck down the Alabama law for a moment of silence. They didn't even strike down that you couldn't pray. They struck down the fact in 1963 that you couldn't even have a moment of silence. Just because they sit on that nine-person bench, that don't mean they're, they're wise, beloved. They could be dumb as a bag of nails. And throughout the Old Testament, even when souls fulfilled God's commands, his statutes, his ordinances, his sacrifices, the Holy Spirit anointed them temporarily. He came upon them for a specific purpose, a specific time. They had faith that realized that only God can turn a mess into a message and a test into a testimony, and a trial into a triumph, and a victim into a victory. Only God can do those things. You know, one of the greatest victors that I know of, that I can think of in our contemporary world, was Nelson Mandela. Here's a man, when he came into power, Everyone worldwide expected him to seek vengeance on the whites in South Africa. And he completely did the opposite. Ah, that's, that's nobility. That's strength. That's wisdom. But we elected a president that chose to divide us. not the current one. Beloved, the fact is is that we have quite a bit of stories and that throughout the Old Testament where it says, and the Spirit came upon them. Balaam, for an example. God made Balaam say what needed to be said. Now, Balaam said he would only say what God told him to say, and so he did. And even to the dismay of Balak, who was offering him all this kind of money and stuff. And then we got judges where God came upon different individuals to take them into leadership. He took a wimp named Gideon and made him a mighty warrior. Remember, Gideon first said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm the smallest in my family. My family's the smallest in, my, 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 in the Benjamites, and Benjamin's the smallest in Israel. What are you talking to me for? Go get somebody who's brave and accomplished. In fact, he was so frightened, he had to have two fleeces, not one, two. Right? Once, let the fleece be dry, and then let the fleece be wet. But God gave them victory. Othniel, Gideon, Samson. Samson the boot. I know there's a lesson in each one for us. And if we really examine them, we find that out. And then he carries out his will. Sometimes making people do what they didn't expect. Saul, he tells him, go back home. You're going to be the king of Israel. Go back home. And on the way home, you're going to run into a group of prophets. They're going to be prophesying. And then you're going to prophesy with them. 
And I'm thinking Saul all the way is going, I ain't prophesying. I don't know how to prophesy. What's prophesying? I don't know how to prophesy. Boom, the Holy Spirit, it says, come upon him and he prophesied. By the way, prophecy is not for, for future telling. Prophecy is speaking forth the word of God. They're not the f- fortune telling or future telling and prophecy are not synonyms. Well, as it turns out, beloved, we see only in the Old Testament that the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Sometimes he empowered them, empowered his servants, and other times he prevented an enemy. Sometimes he just prevented an enemy from attacking, completely forced that enemy to be diverted. Sort of a, a situation when he blinded the entire army. Some to protect his people and other t- times to carry out his will for his saints. God will not violate the will of anyone unless it's going to interfere with his plan for you. That's why he says no weapon formed against you will prosper. You don't need to worry about your enemies. You need to worry about offending God. You, need, you and I need to make sure that we pay attention to honoring him. And then things start to smooth out a little bit. And even when we hit those troubled waters, for us, it's peace. Peace. I remember one time a cousin of mine wanted to go out, become a bayman. So he wanted to go out with me. And uh, he was coming from a great distance to go out with me on a specific day. And then his plan was to, you know, stay overnight and then leave the next morning and go home just to see if he wanted to do this. Well, the day that he was coming out, it was not the nicest weather day. And so we went out. Well, I had been out in weather like that a lot of times, but he hadn't. So the whole time we were out, you could see he was frightened, he was scared, what's going to happen, are we going to sink, you know, and uh, look at that wave. (laughs) At one point he turned to me and he said, you know, I don't know if you're just calloused or you're stupid. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, you don't seem to be bothered at all. I said, I'm not. Been here before. I know things that you don't know. I have experience that you don't have. I don't have to worry about it. It's a bother. Yeah, I wish it wasn't like this. But we'll get it done. Beloved, that's how it is. Now, I wasn't serving God at that time. I was just leaning on experience. If you will honestly and sincerely serve God and trust in him, you will have that same situation, that same circumstance internally when everything around you is falling apart. That's what the scripture says. You don't have to be worried. We live, though, our lives in the world our predecessors have prepared for us. We drive quadricycles wherever we go. We don't know how we would ever do without that cell phone. Or, the internet is down, the internet is down. The other day I was watching a show and cable went out. And my first thought was, cable's out. And then it was like, so what? You got books, man. You know, I don't care if cable's out. But that first initial, right? What am I going to do without cable? No internet? seems odd it's only 25 years ago we got the internet now we can't live without it well someday we will 
that our forefathers have brought us to this place. Our forefathers and foremothers have brought us to the world we live in. And we're creating the world for our ancestors, our descendants, our pro, uh, pro, progeny. God will help and enable us to navigate this journey and prepare us for the final kingdom, but only with our cooperation. He will not force us. He just won't. That's why sometimes you discover, why isn't God doing anything? And then you realize, oh, it's because I did that. And I'm, I'm responsible for this happening. He told me. I know a fellow one time told me I will not buy something until I know God wants me to. And if he doesn't give me the opportunity by the end of January, I'm not going to buy it. In March, he bought one. And it turned out for a year of disaster. Wound up returning it. He lost a lot of money. He said, I'll never do that again. That was my son. Beloved, God wants you you to have the best life you can have. Don't look at others. That's not you. You're you. And he wants you to have the best life you can have. But he only does it if you cooperate. And if you cooperate, one of the things he does is he gives you the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. We read of the first day that... It's not really the first Pentecost. They were celebrating Pentecost. But they were celebrating Pentecost as the 50 days after. It was a, it was a, a celebration of the harvest, bringing in the first harvest. Yeah, you caught that, didn't you? Right? Yeah. Did anybody else catch that? The first time I said harvest. The second time I got New York in there, harvest. <laughs> You're winning. <laughs> and so reality is, is that th that's what Pentecost was. And that's what it was in this moment. God was harvesting, beginning the harvest of his people, the saints. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. It says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, filled. Watch that word filled. Not that the Holy Spirit came upon them. No, no, no. He, the Holy Spirit filled them. It's different. Completely different. And, began, and, th and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It's important that you see that the Holy Spirit now filled them. It didn't just come upon them. There's a difference. In, in chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. Completely different. And then in 431, it says, and, they were prayed, they, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled, gathered together, was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 13, verse 9. I think God is trying to tell us something through the scriptures. In, in Acts chapter 13, verse 9. Then Saul, who also was called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. Not the Holy Spirit came upon. See, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon. Now we get to the New Testament after the crucifixion of Christ and we have the Holy Spirit filling us. This is different. We sing a song here called From the Inside Out. That's what he's doing. That's why he's filling us before he came upon temporarily because the insides were still I want to say filthy we haven't been forgiven but after the cross 
those of us who come to Christ and accept the sacrifice that he made for us, we are cleansed. We're willing to confess we're sinners and we're willing to change. But we need help to change. That's the infilling. That's why he comes inside. He gives us, as he said back in Ezekiel, I will put my spirit in it. I give him a new heart. A heart of flesh. See, it's different. It's much more powerful. It's much more intimate. Very, it's very, very exciting. If you really understand what's going on. The reason Christians think different, the reason we talk different, the reason we act different, the reason we do everything different pretty much than what we used to do, maybe we comb our hair the same. But there are other things that change. And sometimes our family members, our friends, they don't understand. But that's the Holy Spirit filling us. And it's a good thing. Because all good things start in here, if we let it. Now we get to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19. And we read, To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The other day, we, my wife and I, we had some leftover steak from the meal the day before. So instead of having bacon with our eggs, and I, I used that steak. But there was a lot of it. Laid in our chair afterwards, trying to prepare this message, going, I'm so full. Oh, why did I eat it all? You know, but it was good. Oh, that we would say, I'm so full of God. I'm so filled with your spirit, Lord. Pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. You ever fill the sugar bowl, right? You fill it, you dump it in. Then you give it a little shake. So that it kind of packs down a little bit. So you get a little more in there. So you don't have to fill it. Maybe get a day or two more out of that filling, you know. See, that's what you want. You want the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. Fill you from the very bottom of your feet to the very top of your head. Shaken and pressed down and overflowing. That's what we want. That's what Christians want. Why? Because we know then our enemies will be vanquished, including the one we see in the mirror. And we'll be able to live this life that God has in store for us, knowing he's working for us. He's on our side. Oh, beloved, that's what we want. How blessed we are That since we're cleansed by the sacrifice of Christ, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. But it even gets better than that. We're more blessed than some people could ever imagine. It's called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Beloved, And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized. Let every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is to you, to your children and to all who are far off as many as the Lord our God will call. Polycarp was not a contemporary of Jesus. Polycarp was not in that upper room. But Polycarp was a Pentecostal. It didn't stop with those, with those 120. 
It's never stopped. The baptism in the Holy Spirit has been available throughout all of the history from Christ on. Why some people receive it and some don't, I, that's way above my pay grade. I have no idea. And anybody who tells you that they know, they're wrong. From the inception, they're wrong. You know why? Because God gives it. But one of the things we do know is that the people who received it initially and everyone that I know personally, including myself, that has received it, wanted it. We wanted it. Not so that we could, you know, stand on the street corner and say, stop that vehicle, you know. Or coming up to a traffic light, say, turn green. No, no, that's not what it's for. We wanted it so that we could be more in Christ's image. That's why we wanted it. We wanted it so that we could be victors instead of victims. That we would recognize the testimony that's in every test. That we would be able to develop the message out of every mess. And dear beloved, that we would realize we're going to triumph in every trial. And we could live with that security, that assurance, that truth. I don't know why everybody who surrenders their heart to Christ doesn't want it. But some do. They don't. But it's there for you. Just like it says right there. It's there. And it gives you the strength to stand up for Christ in the face of anything. In the face of the trials of your life. But it also gives you the assurance deep down inside, greater than just being filled, that you know God. So, who'd you think of? That person that you admire? Got that fixed in your mind now? Some of you are going, I forgot. Let me, let me quick, let me think quick, 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 quick. I don't care who it is. Could be a scientist, could be a, a writer, it could be a spiritual leader of some sort, it could be a politician, a business person, maybe a family member, distant family member that you've never met, but you've heard about. Now, imagine that you have that opportunity. Somebody says, hey, that person is willing to meet with you. And he, he, they're going to be here at this time. Hope you can make it. You are going to do everything you can, won't you? You take a day off from work. You'll forfeit overtime. You won't even. You'll even give up opportunity to go into a Red Sox game. That's how much you want to see this person. Because it's important to you. Yeah, you already know where I'm going, don't you? You just think you do. Tonight, this is the day of Pentecost. And tonight, we're going to have a devotion. We're going to worship. We're going to have a devotion. And then we're going to send, spend some time in prayer. One of those things you could pray for is, Lord, I want the baptism. I want it, Lord. But you could also pray for a lot of things. George, Jim, family members. You could seek the Lord for guidance and a direction in your life. 
you know, maybe you've got a trial that you need to have triumph in. Maybe you're going through a test and you just don't know how this fits into some sort of a testimony. Maybe there's a big mess going on. And you're looking for the message in it. Well, make believe the cable went out. You know, join me in the world of make believe and enter into the world of reality. Because God will be here. And I'm hoping you will be too. And even some of you, because I know these folks get this, these videos up real fast, you know. And maybe some people aren't here. Let them know what today is. If you, if you know that they're okay, let them know. And invite them to come tonight. And we'll make this a true Pentecostal Sunday for everyone in this building. Not me. I ain't doing nothing. I'm just going to be here. I'm seeking for a fresh infilling. I do that every day. I need God to fill me up every day in my devotion time and in my prayer time. And I pray for every single one of you and those cards and more. Do you know I pray for the people who have come here and disappeared? People that if I mentioned their names, some of you wouldn't even know who they are. They've been gone for years. I'm praying for some people. I've been praying for them for 11 years. I don't know where they are. But God forbid that I don't pray for them. You say, well, you're a pastor. You know what? Instead of day daydreaming about the Dairy Queen you're going to get, you could pray too for family members and friends. Please, beloved, those of you here, remember, I'm also talking to those on the YouTube. They didn't even get out of bed today. But you'll be here next Sunday, right? Reality of it is, beloved, is this is Pentecost Sunday, and it's also Communion Sunday. And so it doesn't always fall the same. You know, sometimes Pentecost Sunday is not the first Sunday of the month. But this time it, it is. This table is so that we remember what Jesus did for us. Pentecost is seeking his spirit so that we can do something for him. I don't know about you, but I like to do something for somebody who did something great for me. Thank you, Jesus. So for those who are going to serve, would you come forward? And for the rest, would you pr please prepare your hearts? Now, this is a time when we recognize that Jesus is our Lord. Some, some services I've been in, it's like this is just like a, an addendum. It's an add-on, you know. It's like, okay, let's get this done. Reality is, is for me, it's the focus of the service. There's no greater focus than focusing on what he did for us. He said, do this in remembrance of me. And so we do. And so, beloved, this is a time for us to assess, do I truly want God, Jesus to be my Lord? Am I willing to surrender everything to him? Am, am, am I willing to say, Lord, whatever needs adjustment in my life, in my attitude, in my heart, please, do it. If that's the case, if that's how you feel, then please join us in this table. But if you don't feel that way, please just let the emblems go by. Maybe some other time. It's okay. It, we're not offended. 
And I don't think God is either. He sees your heart, you're here. But if you would, please, if you feel, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord, join us. And you're not becoming a member of this church. You're, you, you're becoming a part of the body of Christ is what it is if you've never done it before. And then when the men serve you, would you please, or excuse me, men and ladies, share serve you, would you please hold on to the emblems so that we can partake together? And, uh, and so we're going to... Beloved, would you serve, please? Thank you, Lord. Uh,